It's Platt, and today we head to the land down under. That's next on Platt's Beer of the Week. Well, the particular beer we have today is Foster's Lager. It comes to us from Australia. Um, real quick, first I want to introduce everybody to this new setup. I've got uh, my bottles behind me. Uh, decided to set up a little home studio so we don't have to worry about the bird as much. He just gets too fired up when I shoot video. So, going to be shooting uh, some more videos in here in this little uh, studio. Hope you like the setup. And we'll definitely be adding some more uh, bottles to the back. Real quick, uh, Foster's Lager. Why did I pick this beer? Because a lot of people might be, well, hey, wait a minute. You generally do craft beers or whatever. What's, what's this? I was at the liquor store the other day and kind of walked through the beer aisles. And I started noticing brands I hadn't thought about in a long time. Um, you know, Miller High Life. Uh, regular Michelob, um, Killian's Red, certain brands that at one point in time were bigger than they are now and they've just kind of fell to the wayside. They're not, again, they're not craft beers, they're not a rhubarb porter, your local brewery done, but they're not Bud Miller, Coors, Michelob Ultra, what have you. These are brands that at one time were popular and just like I said, you faded or they were regional beers that, that were bought by a bigger company or again they were, they were a brand that was popular but then got bought by a big conglomerate instead of being the number one brand of a regional brewery they were like the eighth or ninth brand in a holding of you know portfolio of beer so uh, I thought Foster's would be a great one to kind of start off um, years ago when I first started drinking the late 80s early 90s Foster's was a real popular beer um, you went to a bar and if they had any kind of imports Heineken, Corona, or but Foster's always in the mix. Uh, you might have had a Bex or an Amstel Light in there too. Um, but Foster's was one of the big first big imports that people had. Uh, again, a huge uh, beer, so I thought it'd be perfect. I'm going to drop one of these in about once a month. These kind of forgotten brands. I'm not going to create a new series for it, but just about once a month. Be prepared to have a random old school beer brand brought back up. So real quick, let's get into a little background about. Foster's. Foster's was founded by William and Ralph Foster in 1888. Uh, the two brothers, yes, they're brothers. The two brothers had moved to Melbourne from uh, New York City in 1886. That's right, Australia's most popular beer was founded by two Americans. Uh, anyway, they moved to Melbourne, started the company in 1888, and then 1889 they started releasing the beer to the general public. And it was about a dozen years later, 1901, that they started exporting the beer. Uh, first, actually, to South Africa for the troops, the Australian troops that are fighting the Boer War. Uh, I guess the boys wanted the beer from back home, so they got it. Um, a few years later, 1907, Foster's move merged with a couple of other um, large Australian breweries to form the uh, Carlton and United Brewing Company. Um, or Carlton United Breweries. Um, actually, the brands that uh, Carlton United brought in, uh, Victoria Bitters and Carlton uh, Drop Beer, those are actually more popular in Australia than Foster's. Um, if you were to go to Australia, go to a footy match or a pub, you would probably drink those beers instead of Foster's. You would kind of come up as a tourist. If you did, um, again, Foster's is more popular internationally uh, than those beers, but at home it's not quite as popular. Uh, similar to, I guess, Corona in Mexico. Corona is not as big as it is here in the U.S. down there. Um, Foster's was first exported to the U.K. in 1971, and the next year later, 1972, it finally made it here to the U.S. One of the interesting things they did, and what kind of captured me, you know, years later to the beer when I was old enough to drink was the big can. They introduced it in a 25.4 ounce can, roughly two American beers, the average beer here is 12 ounce bottle of beer. So this is roughly two beers in one, which is just kind of a cool thing. Also too, the shape uh, reminds you of an old school oil can. If you're of a certain age, you remember oil came, came in kind of a stubby can and you'd have to have a shark's tooth to open it. Foster's oil can, and that's how I always referred to the beer when I first started drinking. Well, hey, Foster's oil can, give me Foster's oil can. So again, kind of uh, genius in, in that. 
Um, Fosters today is distributed in roughly 150 countries all over the world. So wherever you're at, you should be able to find you a ice cold Fosters lager. Um, the current owner of the brand is the Asahi Holding Group, um, which is part of the, another large portfolio of beer. So again, it's probably the step child of the whole thing. Uh, Asahi does have agreements so with uh, other breweries throughout the world to produce and kind of control the brand in their area. Uh, the EU Heineken produces uh, Fosters and controls the brand in Europe. Here in the U.S. it's Miller Coors and in Canada it's Molson Coors. And oddly enough the Fosters, Amer Australian for beer, that was founded by Americans. Uh, the, the, the Fosters we get here in America is actually produced here in America. So. How Australian is who knows uh, real quick another thing that I, I found was interesting and it's something that again 30 years ago when I started drinking caught me to the beer uh, here in the US it's 5% alcohol by volume in Europe and Australia it's 4% alcohol by volume 30 some years ago again when I first started drinking it was kind of a big deal most beers were 4% and depending you know if you look in the south like I did some jurisdictions was 3-2 beer so to find a 5% beer that was sold like at the gas station, stuff like that, uh, back then if you had, and you didn't have a lot of beers that were in the 7, 8, 9% range, but if you did, a lot of those had to be by law sold in the grocery store. Or not in the grocery store, in the liquor store. So again, finding a beer that had just even a little bit more alcohol, it's kind of a big deal. And 5% alcohol by volume in a 25 ounce can for a 19 year old, that was <laughs> just too cool. So uh, again, there's another reason why I fell in love with the beer. Well, before we try this beer, though, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought I would give you some fun Australian facts for, you know, uh, drinking Australian for beer, Fosters. I thought we'd talk about some fun Australian facts before we give this a try. Uh, first, a little fun fact, there are three times as many sheep as there are people in Australia. Insert joke here. Uh, next, uh, the koala. The koala bear, which is an indigenous uh, animal to Australia, the koala bear sleeps roughly 20 hours a day. <laughs> must, must be nice. They have the life. Uh, the legal drinking age in Australia is 18, so all you youngsters out there, keep that in mind. And speaking of drinking, the average Aussie drinks 83 liters of beer per year. Now, I'm a professional, but that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. And last but not least, 17 of the most poisonous snakes on the planet live in Australia. So if I ever make it down there, I'm staying in the pub and maybe having a Foster's or Victoria or whatever else. So let's try Foster's Lager. That's a nice clear beer, golden, uh, light fading head, plenty of bubbles though. Um, some, some light malt on the nose, not a lot of hops. Let's give it a try. That's just a nice, easy drinking beer. Um, a little more viscous than the average American lager. Um, I believe this is an adjunct beer. I want to say they use cane sugar. Or, uh, it's, it's not a pure malt beer. Um, yeah, it does remind me a little bit of what's called an adjunct lager. Uh, we might also refer to it as malt liquor here in the U.S., but you, they take a beer... It has the light lager style body, but they want to bump it up a little bit so they'll add what are called adjuncts. Could be corn syrup, could be rice solids, cane sugar, what have you. Uh, get a little more fermentables in there, but we're not having to use malt. Uh, malt's a little, a, a little more expensive, and B, just again, they want to get more fermentables, and it kind of adds a little body to the beer. So that's what you got here. But it's an easy drinker, not a lot of hops to it. Um, Again, 30 years ago when I first started drinking, this was a kind of a great beer to again break out of the Bud Miller Coors deal. Um, 
but it wasn't too shocking to the system. Um, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't like trying the first pale ale, like a Sierra Nevada or whatever. That that I remember that first time. We're like, whoa, this is different. This was different, but in a manageable kind of way. Overall, though, just a nice, easy drinker. And again, I think it was perfect at that time. Nowadays, is something I drink a lot of. No, not necessarily, but you know, uh, I could see why one time I did. Uh, I can see why one time I did drink the beer of them. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.